Oh, hey, didn't see you there. My name is Sebastian, or AKA Seabass, and today I am looking for one of my favorite species, the Colombian ground squirrel. <laughs> Today, we will be going out saying the Colombian ground squirrels at Fire Ran Pass today. Since 1910, human populations have begun to settle in urban areas over rural or agricultural areas as a result of early industrialization in the U.S. As urbanization in the U.S. has grown over 500% in the past century, wildlife has become increasingly habituated to human presence, even in historically isolated wilderness areas like national parks. Urbanization has dramatically changed the ecological landscape for wildlife. Habituation describes the process by which historically wild animals become used to human presence, diminishing their physiological response to human exposure. Habituation occurs in urban settings as a result of continued exposure to humans, but is also being observed in more isolated areas. National parks had over 300 million visitors in 2021. As traffic through national parks increases to staggering numbers, animal behavior, especially in animals like the Colombian ground squirrel that densely populates the parks, is greatly affected. The effects of habituation on ground squirrel behavior has been previously studied. Some experiments have looked at fly initiation distance, visit frequency, and fecal glucocorticoid metabolite. However, the effect of human presence on animal behavior in wild areas is less understood. So why is it important to study ground squirrels, Sebastian? Funny you should ask, Caroline. There's a critical need to study animal habituation and how it affects boldness. Sebastian, what is boldness? Boldness is an animal behavior dealing with risk in a new environment. See, Bess, how do we study boldness? Well, in an ideal situation, we would leave out trays of food and let the squirrels come there. But you see, that's illegal. So instead, we will be eating our lunches and see and let them approach us. And however close they approach us will be the measure of boldness. Our experimental design is simple yet elegant. This is the Trail of Firebrand Pass. Our on-site location is less than six meters from the trail. We set up four different transects, each 12 meters going in the four cardinal directions. And the observer was located three feet from the bag of chips. Flags were placed each at halfway point in each of the transects at six meters. For our off-trail site, we did 100 meters from the trail. It is the exact same setup in both locations and we did two trials for each of the sites. Our overall objective is to identify the boldness among ground squirrels in trafficked versus untrafficked areas around Glacier National Park to indicate the overall impact of urbanization and human presence on wildlife. Our central hypothesis is that the heavy human traffic around the national parks relates to the increased boldness of ground squirrel populations among previously uninhabited areas. We aim to identify how the increased human traffic and urbanization affects the degree of boldness among wild ground squirrel populations. Riley, what are you doing? Oh, me? I'm looking at squirrel behavior. Depending on how close the squirrels get, we can measure their boldness. Great stuff, Riley. This is live footage of one of the Colombian ground squirrels in its natural habitat. This footage is from one of the on-trail sites and shows the squirrels approaching the lace chip. We recorded each occurrence of the squirrel approaching the chips and the distance to which they approached. To get a standardized measurement, we use the ranging optimeter, as you can see here. And to get the distance recorded, you look through the viewfinder and you will see a yellow box and your object of interest, you just keep on rolling over to the right until you get a sharp focused image. Viewfinder. After conducting our experiment, we had 27 occurrences of squirrel approaches at the on-trail site and zero occurrences of approaches at the off-trail site. We then ran a linear model on the data and got very significant results. Our intercept p-value was 0 0.0008 and our xp-value was 0 0.019. This means that there is a significant difference between the distance approached on the trail versus off the trail. The on-trail sites are represented in black 
and the off-trail sites are represented in red. The off-trail sites are in a straight line at the 35 meter mark because we had zero off-trail sightings and 35 meters is greater than the furthest occurrence recorded. Although we had no off-trail sightings, we heard multiple Colombian ground squirrel calls. With the number of visitors increasing in Glacier National Park, it is crucial that policies be developed to handle human-wildlife interactions. There are already pest management plans mitigating adverse interactions between ground squirrels and organic farmers, but there are none within the park itself. Policies should be developed before the squirrels become considered a nuisance to visitors, potentially putting their life and the visitor's life in danger. This strategy could be employed with other organisms within the park, like mountain goats, bighorn sheep, and marmots. That's all for today, folks. Thank you for joining me on our ground squirrel adventure, and I hope to see you again. Captain Seabass out.